Last thing for today, we have one more react because I know you guys sometimes wonder, you know, if the Megalodon was alive, what would it take to catch it? You know, what would we need? Giant nets, giant boats? Well, luckily we have the great minds over at Brightside <laughs> to, to tell us what we actually need. A big ass net? I have a feeling this nine minute video is not gonna end with, yeah, we just need a big ass net. It's finally been confirmed. Megalodon, the greatest shark of all time, nope, has sand been shark. spotted in the waters of the South Atlantic. Holy shit. A group of researchers the Megalodon has been spotted in the South Atlantic, despite being a warm water coastal shark. Okay, cool. I'm on board. ...are preparing for the expedition of a lifetime. Oh, the tiny ass dinghy. ...catch and tag the ocean predator to further study its behavior. First of all, they need a fishing boat large enough to withstand the weight and lunge force of such a huge shark. Totally. At the moment, the only vessel close enough to what they need is O-Search. A former crabbing boat refurbished to catch and take. There's no way the largest and strongest boat that the government has at their access is in a, a, an old fishing vessel, especially a tiny one like that. We have boats for this kind of. There are literally boats that like tow other boats. This is not. <laughs> there are aircraft carriers. We have boats that like are the size of fucking like. I don't even know how to describe the size of it, like a city, basically on a fucking boat. But the best thing we have is an old crabbing vessel. But although great whites are the largest modern predatory sharks, they're still much smaller than the megalodon. A great white shark can grow up to 20 feet in length. There's no way, way that's a great white. The megalodon, on the other hand, reached. Is that really a, a picture of a great white? Look at the Photoshop job. Someone just just clicked with the wand and didn't put the tolerance low enough so you could just see where it cut out part of the shark. That's a sandbar shark. Yeah, it certainly didn't look like a great white to me. The researchers decided to follow the lead of their colleagues in Indonesia. Conservation International tags <coughs> whale shark. These are the largest of the modern shark species. They weigh up to 10 tons. Since they feed on plankton, just like baleen whales, they're not a threat to humans, and they sometimes get caught in fishing nets. That's when fishers call on scientists to tag them. A team of divers okay. gets down to so the we're going to use the strategy that we use on whale sharks on the fucking Meg. Perfect. Shark. If the surviving Meg somehow gets into a fishing net, it'll probably just tear it apart with its sheer mass, helping with its monstrous teeth. I mean, it's Enjoy. still significantly smaller than most whales, right? So why would why would there be any indication that it would be able to tear apart a net any more than anything else? Industrial fishing nets are usually made of synthetic materials, such as nylon or polyester. In this particular case, something much sturdier has to be deployed. In the end, the scientist's choice fell on the common shark fishing practice, a drift gill net. It's a set of nets that catch fish by the gills, and they drift near the surface or in midwater. I always thought gill nets were kind of fucked up. I don't know. I've we used a gill net in my ichthyology class at one point, but it just seems like the most fucked up way of catching. I don't know. Maybe a hook through the mouth is probably worse, but getting gilled feels like I don't know. If I was a fish, it feels awful. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it better than like other than in my mind, it feels like a bad way of catching things. Yeah, it's kind of like barbed wire. I mean, it's not barbed at all. It literally just catches on their gills and then they like can't swim backwards or forwards or whatever. I've used a lot of different like net types and seine nets and I feel like those don't really do any any direct damage. But yeah, a, a gill net is like putting them in a chokehold. It just looks painful. For Megalodon, there will also have to be a larger mesh size. The meg is massive and will get caught anyway, while smaller fish will swim through no problem. Lovely. Next up is so glad that in the distant future, when we decide that the megalodon is actually alive, that we're using a proper mesh size on the gill net. That's what I was worried about. Bycatch. To lure in the megalodon, researchers decide to catch a whole lot of tuna. It's among the largest Atlantic fish sure. species. A big enough school of this fish will probably get the attention of a giant shark. Okay. It takes several weeks of going with shark tagging teams to train the staff to act quickly and precisely. And at last, the crew is ready to go. The boat aptly So named their plan is to put in a giant gill net, fill it with tuna, 
fish, live tuna fish, a big school. Just hope that the Meg wanders across it, and then they've got a bunch of people in the water just in case it tries to escape. What the fuck are they gonna do? Oh, yeah, and by the way, they're on an old crabbing boat. After a full day of sailing, the researchers arrive to the spot. The weather is fine, the waters are clear, and the forecast says there shouldn't be any storms coming their way in the next few days. Wow, the perfect Meg catching weather. They drop the sea anchor to stay in place and prepare the net. It's hidden under the deck, and it takes half the hands on board to deploy it. When the net is down and one of its ends is it's attached just not a to gill the stern, net. the mega search starts moving. The net goes on for a full mile. That should be enough for the big cat. Oh, so they're trawl netting. So they're not gill netting anymore. What happened to the gill netting idea? I thought they were gill netting. Now they're trawl netting. A gill net stays in place and floats on the surface of the water. A trawl net you drag along with you. They just completely changed their plan. And who is paying for this? Um, I don't know, man. It didn't even say which country is doing it. The team drops several nets off their bait on both sides of the gill net. No matter which side... Wait, they keep calling it a gill net, but they keep saying that they're moving the boat and trawling it along. Can you trawl a gill net? I don't think you can trawl a gill net. That doesn't make sense. The shark will approach from. It will certainly get into... Drop anchor in the middle of the open Atlantic. Yeah, they are on the mid-Atlantic ridge, aren't they? They are quite literally in the middle of the Atlantic, which is thousands of meters deep. Just drop an anchor. <laughs> the chain that holds that anchor would weigh down the ship on its own for how long it would have to be. The net is still drifting as it had, and some of the crew went to check the bait. All still there. That's suspicious. How are the baits still there? How are the tuna there? Wouldn't the tuna just swim out of the net because they're smaller than the gill net? Normally, other big predators would come by and try to eat such a tempting bit of food. But none came this night. It's as if they were afraid of something. That gives the scientists <laughs> hope. But then, after a few hours, the lookouts notice strange movements of the gill net. It's shaking and thrashing as if something big is in there, desperately trying to get out. The lookouts sound the alarm and wake everyone up. The most difficult part begins. The diving team set out in two light motorboats and seek the place. <laughs> light motorboats. I'm really confused what the purpose of the divers is. They said that they trained them, but what do they train them to do? Are they going to personally grab it and hold it back? What does a team of divers do in this situation? It's where most of the shaking occurs. In a couple of minutes, they find it. The net is pulled taut. Something huge is caught in it. No Still, way. they can't be quite sure it's their chase yet. The water is dark, and they can't see anything. Wouldn't it be caught from the outside, though? Because it's a it's a gill net, so it's a straight line. So it just swam into it and got stuck. It's not like in a net. You would still have to... I don't even know. How how do you pull it up from a gill net? It doesn't... For, like, a gill net is just one long line of, like, open mesh. So you can't just, like, pull it up from that. As it went to the second one, it got entangled in the gill net and was now struggling madly to get out. So they had two small nets filled with tuna inside of a big gill net. And the luck is on the diver's side. The Meg finally stops thrashing. What, what were the divers going to do? I don't understand the point of training the entire diver team. As other divers prepare the tranquilizers just in case, the one with the satellite tag comes closer to the giant's back. Delicately, the diver places the tag on the shark's dorsal fin. It just swam into it's the gill net. Quickly, they free both sides and go above to <laughs> this person, They don't know what a gill net is. What do you mean free both sides? The gill net is not something he's just like, you just take him out from the outside. I feel like I have to show what a gill net is because this video has a very weird concept of a gill net. It's like this. It's a literally a big long line with weights and floaters and things just get caught they get their gills caught in it when they swim through it. Cutting either side of it is not going to do anything. It's not a circle. It doesn't catch. The fin quickly chases the boats and for a second the divers think it's over for them. But then it turns back and goes underwater. <laughs> There's still tuna waiting for it. Debated. And now the scientists can finally learn more about the greatest ocean predator in history. Wow. What a wonderful it's a horrible video. That was actually, of the Bright Side videos, probably one of the worst. The Bright Side videos are usually so bad that they're funny. That one was so bad that it was bad. I don't know how to describe it better than that. It just wasn't good. Whoa.